Good morning, everyone. I'm Gana Sena Naika from uh, Department of Building Economics. And today I'm going to present you my final year research on assuring sustainable construction through reversing project feasibility evaluation criteria. Here's the presentation outline and first I will discuss about the background. So as you all know, the construction industry highly impact on environment, society and economy where that impact may be negative or positive. A negative impact uh, can be minimized through incorporating sustainable construction. However, with the increasement of uh, population, the living standard of people are rising and earth ability to provide these resources are declining. Uh, therefore, the mainly developing countries have a high demand for sustainable construction, but the barriers like lack of project owners demand, inadequate sustainable construction practices, optional practice of uh, sustainable development for construction industry, and limitation in sustainable assessment tools are hindering these sustainable practices in those countries. Therefore, having a minimum sustainable requirement or any other sustainable performance criteria for sustainable decision making is essential and it should be implemented or that decision making should be incorporated at the most uh, critical phase of project life cycle, which is the inception stage. So the research problem, so there are sustainable guidelines for the inception stage which are uh, accepted under the rules and regulation of a country. So in Sri Lanka, EIA, UDA, EIA and UDA examples. So however, these uh, guidelines, although they are legally accepted, their focus is uh, mainly only towards environmental pillar when it comes to sustainable development. The project feasible study also as a tool at uh, project inception stage. It's traditional approach of doing it. It's not, not legally accepted, and it uh, don't have. It does not have a standard practice of conduct. And but uh, however, it uh, assess all three pillars of sustainability with may little uh, more concern toward financial issues. So we found a research gap uh, of coming up a new approach, which is to uh, come up with a legally accepted sustainable decision making tool. So our research question is what are the feasibility criteria to assure sustainable construction at early project stages? So the aim is to develop a novel criteria for project feasibility checks on construction work in Sri Lanka to embrace the principles of sustainability development, incorporating below five objectives. So first one is to critically review the relationship between feasibility study and assuring sustainability. And second is to identify the minimum sustainability requirement. And third one is to elaborate on measurable criteria to implement this uh, implement this minimum sustainability requirement and uh, propose governmental authorities. And last one is to devise the role of these governmental, identified governmental authorities. So this methodology, first we did a background study to come up with the research problem and name an objective. Then literature survey was done to achieve objective one. Then data was collected through qualitative research approach, conducting uh, interview surveys through Delphi technique. So there were two rounds, each round include two phases. So 10 experts were there in interview panel. So the collected data were analyzed through manual content analysis and findings were presented with conclusion and recommendation. So the findings. So first finding is the objective one. There we, uh, mm, there we analyzed over oh, there we, uh, See the relationship between the feasibility study and assuring of sustainability, which mainly covers by the literature review. So project feasibility study as a appraisal technique to check the viability of different investment alternatives. However, a, a error at this stage will fatally affect the project performance and closely related to problems of sustainable development. However, the clients are doing this project feasibility study mainly to consider about the financial issues financial issues and uh, to uh, 
to ensure that they are getting the accepted or the expected level of the profit. So incorporating the sustainability principles with the government intervention, we can have an effective project feasibility study, which is a roadmap for all subsequent decision. And it will uh, ensure all three pillars of sustainability with a standard procedure. So this table uh, lists down the sustained performance criteria and identified through the literature review and it includes 50 criteria from six research papers. So with this 50 and, uh, and also incorporating uh, 28 criteria from lead uh, sustainability assessment tool, we, we come up with 78 uh, so, system performance culture and that list was uh, provided to the uh, interview panel uh, at round one of phase one so there they were asked to identify the minimum sustainability requirement so out of uh, 78 uh, with a new criteria called cost benefit analysis which was uh, in which was uh, newly identified by the interviewees uh, bold index cost benefit analysis. So altogether 79 out of 79, 68 were identified as the minimum sustainable requirement and it is listed in the first column of this table. So in phase two of the round two, they were uh, again asked to identify what are the criteria that are already been assessed by legally accepted guidelines maybe through EIA or governmental authority. So they identify 21 from EIA and 12 from governmental authorities. So this blue highlighted are the criteria that need to be mandated. So there are uh, 35 criteria highlighted in this table that need to be mandated. So that 35 are carried to the Delphi round two uh, and in this uh, round, uh, the interview is asked to identify the measurable factors to benchmark each criteria and legal bodies to implement this criteria. So they identify 82 uh, measurable factors with nine legal bodies. So as an example, if we take tax policy, the tax rate, amount of tax release in a similar project are the measurable factors and Ministry of Finance and Inland Revenue Department are the legal bodies that can implement this tax policy um, to assess the project at inception stage. Okay. Then uh, that I, uh, that, uh, identify minimum sustainability requirement or non-legalized minimum sustainability requirements so are divided into identified nine uh, governmental authorities. So we can see in this figure that most of the criteria are under UDA. So out of 35, 18 are under UDA. So UDA has a critical role of ensuring sustainable construction of project feasibility stage in Sri Lanka. So even the interview is also highlighted that many sustainability criteria like energy efficiency, water conservation, and even um, uh, uh, land, uh, better use of land, land conservation, everything can be implemented and it can be successfully implemented through local governmental authorities like UDA. So conclusions, the sustainable construction is not yet the standard practice in Sri Lanka. So it is because there, there is no uh, legally accepted guideline at the project, uh, guideline to assess the projected project inception stage and to uh, ensure that the clients are following. So they are willing to, not willing to, that they are having a legal base that they are pushing towards to implement sustainable construction. So the study use project feasibility study as a tool to ensure sustainability con uh, construction, ensuring um, uh, to ensure ensuring uh, the benefit of uh, benefit of uh, benefit environmentally, socially, and economically, uh, con considering right group of criteria. So. That right group of criteria six 
identified in the study are 68 minimum sustainable requirement and out of that 33 were already been assessed by uh, local government no governmental authorities under any legalized guideline so 35 need to be mandated and we identify 82 measurable factors with nine governmental authorities so there was a requirement for for a guideline sustainable guideline and it was assisted assist assist uh, through assist uh, by identifying minimum sustainability requirement uh, to make the project feasibility study a sustainable guideline to assure the sustainable construction of project inception state. So the recommendation are mostly to the government and to focus on fiscal incentives and subsidiary for the client and developers and tax reduction, code, sustainable code and standards and policy making process to drive drive owners toward implementing sustainable construction and increasing awareness through education and training and engagement and collaboration of stakeholders at the project feasibility stage. So the further direction uh, is, to, uh, is benchmarking the minimum sustainability requirement and contribution, theoretical contribution is uh, that the research of uh, similar research of developing countries can use this study or the findings to benchmark the minimum sustainability requirement and industry contribution is the government and the con construction industry can guarantee sustainable construction at the feasibility stage by using this minimum sustainability requirement. So these are the references in the presentation and thank you very much for listening.